What's up, Roscoe's? Hi. Wow, it is packed it in is. here. It is. We got a full house. Bitch. It's like it's, it's like y'all ready for a show. Cause I y'all think know they are. Y'all know what's about to happen, right? Oh mm-hmm. my God, some shit is about to go down. Okay. I have prepped these two individuals and told them. Don't hold back, because you know they're like, well, we're still up we're for still the crown. Mm-hmm. We're still competing. Fuck that shit. Um, you're going to tell us everything we want to know. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to keep you waiting. Let's get this shindig started. Please give it up for the one, the only Miss Candy Muse. And Roscoe's Freaks, keep that energy going for the stunning Jimbo. Jimbo. (laughs) Hello, hello, Roscoe's. Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome. Have a seat, ladies. Have a seat. Well, oh my God. Hi, everyone. Hello. You know, I heard when Alexis Michelle was here, it was empty. So, wow, what a change. Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. Oh, my God. This is exactly the energy I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, welcome. How are you guys doing? You doing good? I'm feeling great. I'm so excited. We're almost there. We're near the end of the race. Candy and I are neck and neck, or I've got a neck and... <laughs> Listen, bitch. No, we, we've been so good. I mean, we've been nonstop traveling, you know, promoting the show across the world. Um, it's been an incredible ride. And I have been watching Roscoe's every single week, so I know what you bitches have been saying. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I said what I said. <laughs> no, and plus, listen, I'm excited to be here because all season long, everyone has had so many opinions about me, and I've been quiet all season. Oh, yeah, right. Tonight, the girls will let have. Yes! Well, if there's a place to do it, it's here at Roscoe's. <laughs> uh, speaking of, I want to let everyone know at YouTube, go ahead and push subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please, please, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Oh, wow. We're on and YouTube right now? We're on yes, YouTube we are right, right now. now. Oh, my God, I made it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you'll hear this, uh, you know, a You'll hear this throughout the show. It's very serious. I take this very seriously. Yes. So please, please, please vote for me in the Fame Games. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> the switch up. That was good. You know what? That was really good. I would say vote for her, but I think I should vote for Jimbo in the Fame Games. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. I, I, okay. Okay. Oh okay. okay. Well, today is the uh, Fame Game Extravaganza hosted by... These two lovely ladies, we're all super excited to see. Yes, we were just talking about it upstairs. Yes, they don't so know excited. that yet. We're super excited. What? They don't know we're hosting. Well, they do now. Spoiler uh, spilled. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> with that said, let's go ahead and get this started. Go ahead. Wait, before we start, I do oh, want to remind wait. everybody there is no recording tonight. Please do not try it. None just whatsoever. Don't do it, okay? Make sure you guys Thanks. drink and we'll have some fun. Yay? Gorgeous! Okay. <laughs> yes. Work. Okay. Okay, we're going to backtrack a little bit. We're going to start all the way from the beginning, which will be the end of last week's episode. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with you, Candy. Candy, you chose Jessica's lipstick, and you sent Jessica home. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen that you've gotten a lot of uh, shit for it, and they have literally said, and I quote, you just gave the crown to Jimbo. Yes. Thank so you. funny. I tell me, tell Thank me you. what your first. Tell me what your <laughs> mind, what your thought process was for even picking Jimbo, or and, not picking Jimbo. Or, or I mean, I'm sorry, picking Jessica and staying with Jimbo within the competition. Here's I, I, funny enough. I was just watching a TikTok last night where uh, Monet and Naomi were saying how it was a dumb decision that I kept Jimbo. Here's my thing: if I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win whether Jimbo is there or not. So. <laughs> When have challenges ever mattered in Drag Race history? Because Jimbo has four and I have two does not mean anything. And uh, before... Whoa, listen. Wait, it's it's uh, it happened to Shea kool right? Before we got into Drag Race, me and Jimbo had a pact from 
even on tour, that's my bitch. Y'all don't see it on TV, but this is my one of my best friends. So there is no way. And, I, let me, and Jessica, I adore and love her. She was such a light in the workroom and so fun to have. There is no way $200,000 in a crown or not, I was going to send my best friend home. I don't know how you bitches roll. I don't roll like that. Now, keep this in mind. I've heard... Oh, well, Naomi sent um, Manila home and it didn't affect her career. Or, um, you know, Pangina sent Jimba home and it didn't affect... I'm... She's right here. Hard. That was hard. <laughs> I'm a plus-size brown man. I promise you... Oh, my God, you if, are? If I would have sent Jimba home, it would have affected my career from the moment that episode would have aired. I'm not stupid. When we're, when we're sitting there and we're picking the lipsticks, you think I didn't think to myself... I should just send this bitch home right now. It crossed my mind a little bit. But no, I'm, I'm not dumb. At the end of the day, I, first of all, I'm going to choose whatever the fuck I want to choose. The same way I chose James to go home because I wanted James to go home is the same Ooh. way I chose Jessica to go home because it was her time to go. And I know people look at it and like, it's a competition. Think about yourself. There is so much more to Drag Race than what y'all see. I have to live with the choices that I make on that show. Not y'all. Y'all get to go to your nine to five jobs. Girl, next week, I won't get a booking because guess what? No one wants to show up because everyone hates me because I sent Jimbo home. It's a game within a game within a game within a game. And also, y'all haven't seen the finale just yet. Well, hello. Hello. Ooh. So let me ask you this, Jimbo. Jimbo. And fuck Jimbo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Jimbo, you're... There's a possibility that you could have gone home. Did yes. you really think she was going to honor this uh, alliance that you had? Or did you think there was a possibility that she was going to just send you packing? I thought there is a real possibility just because um, in that moment where you, everything's moving really quickly and it's really hard to focus and you're filming and you're moving from one set to the next and so there isn't really a lot of time to process or think and you can make snap decisions that you that you have to process almost after the fact and so uh, of course I thought you know uh, there's a very good chance this is two hundred thousand dollars and a crown that of course Kenny would uh, choose my lipstick. I thought that could happen. But I w had to just hope that I knew what I would have done in my heart, which was I wanted to go to the end with Candy. I love Jessica so, so much, and I was so happy to be in top three with her. But I knew in my heart, what would I do? I would keep Candy. And so I was hoping that that was what was real throughout the competition, as we had discussed. But of course, as we knew with Heidi and some of these seeds that had been planted, there was in my head, I thought, oh, this is the chance she could be getting me. And, and also, it's not like uh, there's been nights where I've been sleeping, and I'm like, Fuck, what if? What if I just lost it all? But no, I stand in my decision. At the end of the day, I would have felt like a fucked up person knowing that Jimbo would have kept me there and I was a bitch and just sent her home. At the end of the day, and it, it's like, I think Jessica on season two said it once, I'm gonna give you my panties. If I'm gonna win, it's because I either gave you my panties or I didn't get, I'm gonna win because I'm gonna win. Not because you have, no, at the end of the day, RuPaul is gonna make her decision on what the fuck RuPaul wants to do. So it could have been Jessica, it could have been Nation Lopez there. At the end of the day, they're going to crown whoever the fuck they're going to crown. But I have to live with my decision. So, Jim was my bitch. And in February, come see us in a cruise. We're going to the Caribbean. Yes. We're going on a cruise. We just added Jessica Wilde. She's coming Work. with us. I love that. Yes. So, That's fuck out of here. <laughs> so, we just saw the... What, what, what would have you done? That what? You yeah, what would you home? have done? What? Who would I have sent home Candy, between you two? Candy, can I ask yeah. you to stop throwing hands over there <laughs> at my friends? Like, it's, bitch, it's not I, that kind I, of party oh, tonight. Bitch, I didn't flinch once. Okay? <laughs> no, no. Um, okay, no. Uh, real quick before I even answer that. Um, ah! No, we saw the reading challenge. That's kind of... A, a lot of people love the reading challenge, right? Everyone pretty... Yes? No? Do we love that? Yeah. Okay, we do. Okay. Since we, we only got to see a couple of the reads that you guys did a lot more... Do we you, did everyone. Right, we did, we did everyone. That's right. We, we went through the entire line. Um, do you guys want to share some of your reads? That, do you remember any of them? Because they only show two of each. One of my favorite reads, and I'm only going to say because she was here last week saying how I crossed boundaries and lines in the fucking world. Alexis. Who said that? Alexis. She First said of you, all, cast, you crossed boundaries and lines? She said I crossed uh, boundaries. I went too far with my jokes. 
bitch, suck my dick. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She but there was one joke that I said. I said, Alexis Michelle, this morning I took a shit that's way more talented than you. And bitch, you could just see it. <laughs> but I don't remember the rest. Actually, the tea is, on the van ride to the uh, set, I had no reads. So I was sitting in the van ride with Jimbo. I said, Jimbo, girl, give me some jokes. Yeah. Girl, I got all the jokes from Jimbo, girl. I did. I, go, I wrote you, like, all the jokes. And then because I had been sitting there writing all her jokes, I was like, okay, this one's good for this one. This is da 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 I gave you all my jokes. And then when it came time to the read, it didn't show it. But I choked. And I was like, I was like yeah, all right, you, uh, zinger, I got you that one. And I was like, all right, but it jokes. was Jokes, 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 jokes. Laugh, laugh, laugh. And they were like, what? But it was so funny. It was still so funny. <laughs> or oh, when I called you Elimination oh, Lopez. Look at, look at this. Look at this. So I tell Candy, we're, we're having like this serious conversation. <laughs> so serious. And I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, girl, you know, they, they call me Elimination Lopez. Real serious. She's like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, my and God. She's like, that. she's like, put that in the back seat. And then, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then the reading challenge, she's like, Elimination Lopez. I'm like, you bitch. But it was, it was so, it was so good. But um, they were, yeah, there were some good reads. There were some good ones, yeah. I think for the most part, everyone, had, I think Kasha did win that fair and square. Also, you know, what we did was we, you know, usually the reading challenge is the first thing, right? So we were all ready to do it the first episode. She, uh, Kasha had her little bag with like 15 jokes in there for each person. Like she was ready. She's like, uh, Nisha, um, I didn't have one for you. And I'm like, well, that's shady right there. And she's like, no, bitch, I didn't know you were going to be on. I had the whole cast. Like she was so excited. She had her little popcorn purse with all her reads. Do you remember her little popcorn purse with all the reads in the oh, purse? Yeah. It was so sickening. And then we did the whole first episode, and she's like, what the hell happened on the reading challenge? <laughs> it was so cute. Which I hope it lived up to everyone's, because I know the whole the entire season, everyone kept asking, we wanted it. where is it, where is it? So I hope that that led, led up. It delivered. Up. It delivered. It, did, it delivered. Yeah. She delivered! <laughs> <laughs> now, were y'all excited that y'all essentially had a week off? Y'all get to judge the other girls coming back? Yeah, it was nice for not to be afraid for our lives for one episode. Oh. <laughs> it was nice to treat. just go, oh, okay, we can just come and have fun and watch the girls put on a show and we get to perform and it's all just for fun. It was the best. It felt really, really good. Candy, thoughts? But I wanted to do well, one read that I didn't get to do, which I really liked, and it was when I was doing Joan. I said, oh, Candy Muse is such a stupid bitch. If you wanted to leave, all you have to do is grab her leash and she goes right for the goddamn door. <laughs> <laughs> go off, go off, go off. <laughs> um, okay. No, I, I guess it was good to have a, a week off. I mean, I, it's I don't we me and Jim said although we're not competing, the viewer and the audience is still watching as if we are. So I was like, girl, we're gonna look sickening, you know. Yeah. Anyways. Also, no, I didn't feel like you guys had it like off, off because we were doing stuff. But every two seconds, it was like, Candy, Jimbo, we need you. And then it was like, question or like you had to do this or that. So it's not like you were like right. yeah, off, we were off. Because yeah. I mean, we're doing, we're shooting one episode, but we're also prepping for the next one. At least you guys, especially, oh, wow. you know what I mean, uh, with your finale coming up. Um, but on that note, let's go ahead and go back and see where we're at. Okay, very nice, very uh, nice. Uh, Y'all are talking, y'all are catching up. We have some walkthroughs. And then we find out, another twist is thrown in there, the top two fame game contenders get to compete for a chance to lip sync to double, triple, quadruple, quintuple their points. In that moment, Nasha, Jimbo, Candy, were y'all just like, okay, this is cute, or were you like, what the fuck? Rigor Morris. Oh. Oh. It's a simple, It's for me, it was as simple as that. It, it's a simple... The, the thing about it is you're top two and you're going to multiply them. To me, it's just another way to control the narrative. Okay, uh, because regardless, period, if I get 10,000 votes and you got five and it's times three, you're go and you, you're going to get more than me, period. Um, math, so it, it's just, it's just, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, so it was, it was just kind of like, really? Like that kind of thing at first? That was the thing. But before we even get into that twist, there's something else that I wanted to bring up. Speak on it. 
because when we first got there, we did the reading thing, but we actually went straight to the couch. Like, we didn't go and do the reading challenge right away. We almost had like a reunion. We all sat at that couch, and it was fierce, because by this time, I'm like, I got 15 minutes of camera time. I need to get some camera time on this. Like so, a moment where y'all recapped I, the season? So yeah, we basically did, right? We basically recapped everything. And the seat is it's like a di it's like a diamond. So I got right in the middle of it. And we all sat down and we actually hashed everything out on those couches, correct? Well, hashing out seems like we were talking. No, we we argued. Everyone argued. <laughs> okay. So what so this is what it started off because as we came in, we sat down, and then we're like, well, how's everyone like kind of doing or whatever? And then, of course, Heidi was not there. So I had spoken to Heidi on the phone and kind of got a gist of what happened. So I was, trying to, I was playing <laughs> double that. So you walk in. So you were the one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You said candy. Heidi had said. That's exactly what she said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is exactly what she yeah, said. Yeah. So it, but, but I'm so pissed they took it out because it was so good. Because we went through everything. We went through Heidi. Uh -huh. We went through Alexis and Lala. Lala confronted Alexis, yeah. And it, that, that exchange that they had right there, there was a better one than that, right? What but do you this, think? This one was more better heartfelt. I felt one. like this was after they had gotten through part of the... The, the sort arguing. of initial part. This seems to be now that they they've had a minute, and it's I think a nice version of what where they came to in the end. Yeah. That where they got to show, you know, their, themselves in their best light because you know we all know fighting on the TV is. Wait, not I want to know what happened on what the couch. What was said that they had to take it out? Yeah, that's so. Wild. This is the thing with the couch, right? Jimbo and Candy are still competing, <laughs> so. Things that they say may affect them. I don't give a fuck. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no, seriously, it was just basically arguing and stuff like that. Everyone was like, "Well, you said this, and you said everything that everyone says." Like in the confessionals, huh? Ooh, what? say it. <laughs> Hold on, I'll say it. Just give me a sec. I can't Look at this shit, bitch. No, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, we, we did, listen, basically what kind of happened was Alexis cried again, and <laughs> that's why they took and, it out. That's and it was, no, no, and it was a direct result of everyone kind of saying, like, girl, you got kind of caught up in the game, and you made some decisions that you might not be happy with when you see them. Um, and then, but my favorite part was Alexis... I don't care, I'm gonna say exactly how she said it. She was like, you know what, Lala, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because you know what, I should have sent you home. And, just, <laughs> and she just said to her like that, I should have sent you home. And she goes, you know what, bitch? And it was so good. And she's like, fuck you. And I'm like, oh my God, this is what I came for. <laughs> So we won't get to see the accountability so maybe, ownership. Maybe do you think they might show it in Untucked, maybe? Absolutely oh, not. That could be, yeah, that it could might be. be Untucked. Oh my God, maybe. Did, did, James come it? did James come unglued at all about anything? Um, what? Did you come? You, what, you Candy? Came no, no. Candy, what you the mic. Into the mic, Candy. You said Candy, something. Candy, no, 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 mic, no. You're... I have a grand finale next week. Yeah. <laughs> we do... I'll just have her feed me some stuff. I'll say it. Don't worry. Um, no, but, um, well, speaking of things we've said, um, something I've said all season, Jimbo, um, I'm so happy that you finally won a lip sync, babe. Congrats Thank to you. you. Yes. I'm officially a lip sync assassin assassinator. Not too much. Okay. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait, whoa, whoa. Slow down, Jimbo. Slow down. Well, no. I am. Once you assassinate an assassinator, you're a lip sync assassin assassinator. So... Math, we love that. No, did so, you feel throughout um, all of All Stars they were setting you up with some like sickening lip sync assassins, or were you just like, this isn't my song? So, what do you mean? Did <laughs> do you think the lip sync assassins were too hard for you to beat, or do you think the song choice was uh, just not your? So teeth? what what I explained to Mamaru is so when I develop a performance, for me it's a step process that either goes look. Um, story, music, 
And the three go together. And when you're in the context of Drag Race, you're kind of just picking a song, picking an outfit, and doing a thing. And I was having a hard time reconciling how in the moment to do what I do best, which is very um, sort of planned out in a way in terms of what, what sort of thing I want to do. And I was getting there and things were getting scrambled. And what they said was stop trying to do what other people do and do what you do. And so I kept watching Drag Race and being like, look at that pretty girl spin around with a pretty dress. I'm like, that's what I need to do. It's, uh, but I can't necessarily do that. So as well as the other people, right? So She can. I've seen Jimbo perform, and I, and I think people have this thing where Jimbo's not a great performer. Jimbo is actually a really good performer. The one thing we always told Jimbo is, change your fucking shoes. Jimbo <laughs> likes to perform in these shoes that a professional, I've been doing drag for 10 years, I could never perform in those shoes. I'm going to bust my ass. And Jimbo is great at what she does. And to me, you know, Jimbo's not sexy. Hey, Jimbo's not cunt. What the fuck, bitch? Oh my Whoa. god, you wow. your hair off. Ah, but what Jimbo does, and to me, when she did her her ghost thing, it was just a great example of, you know, sticking to what you know how to do. Because I think on Drag Race sometimes they like to put us in a box and you you have to be a, a lipstick assassin and splits and dips and girl, just go up there and throw baloney and RuPaul will love you. Great job on bringing Casper back, and congrats on winning that lip sync, Diva. Yeah, Very proud of you. you. Now, yeah. It was actually, it was so cool because uh, Silky had been quite upset with me on Twitter about what I had not said about Pangina, what I decided not to say. And so uh, she was very upset, and I never talked to her. I never, you know, all I wrote to her was just, sorry, Silky, and I figured you're a sister, and we'll get over it, and we'll see each other on the road. It's going to be fine. So I didn't pay any attention really and so when I saw her that was the first moment on that stage and so we looked at each other and we just decided to dance together and it was just like silent agreement and I felt it in that moment and then we just decided to have fun together and it was so playful and so just amazing that moment together and we just decided to have fun and I, I just loved it so it felt really magical. I did want to ask you this. Um, you did mention at one point that you were, you were getting frustrated because you were winning a challenge and you're on this high and then you do the lip sync and you lose the lip sync. Yeah. Was it affecting you in the competition? <laughs> um, does that affect me in the competition? Yeah, because it made me go, um, I don't want to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the individual challenges. I was like, let someone else do it. I can't bear that feeling. <laughs> so at, by the time it was like, you know, I had won the third, I had, I had lost, I had went into a porta potty, screamed my head off thinking that nobody could hear me. I had a full meltdown, everyone heard it. I stuck my head inside an industrial air conditioner, like all the way in. And I, I, <laughs> I wish so, you yeah, were joking. So it definitely, it definitely was frustrating because there I am in front of Mama Roo and in front of the world and on record for all time. <laughs> so then, you know, I really, um, uh, you know, really want in those moments to be so sickening and deliver what everyone around the world is watching and, and wanting in those moments. And so it was so fucking frustrating. And so I just, I knew I could do it. I just needed some time to figure it out. And I do figure it out. Uh, um, as you'll see and so yeah it was frustrating but it was also uh, Drag Race is an amazing experience in terms of the growth and it's this like crazy boot camp that I've gone through now three times and each time I come out having learned so much more and as a better performer entertainer and artist so um, I think it was a, definitely a growing thing and part of you know being failing is, is growing so Love that. And we're, we're going to go back to the show, but before we do, I do have to say, we've, I've mentioned this a few times during our viewing party because I feel like your confessional photo, because you wear the same shirt for good luck, right? My lucky shirt. Yeah. It's her lucky shirt, and she wears it in all her confessionals on all three seasons. And what I loved about it was the glow up. The shirt keeps deteriorating, but the face keeps getting better. <laughs> You have to clock the shirt. And it was so funny when we're doing the confessional, and I'm like, you're, this is what you're wearing? Because the shirt's falling apart, right? Yeah, because um, like some moths got to it. <laughs> I know, it's vintage, and it's real silk or something like that. And 
so it's tasty apparently to something in my closet, but um, yeah, so it's, it is falling apart, but that's what makes it magical. I found it in New Orleans um, I, at the top of this vintage store, and I saw it, and I thought, that's got to be like $500. That's got to be the most expensive shirt ever, and the person was like, that? That's like 10 bucks. I was like, I was like, really? Oh my God, I'll take it. <laughs> so um, I like to think it belonged to Bootsy Collins. That's, that's the, my made-up story for it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, let's go back to the show and see what's going on. Oh, yeah, and I have merch here with my partner. Oh, yes, wait, 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 uh, really quick, really quick. We do have merch. Uh, Jimbo has merch over here in between the two bars. So you can go ahead and stop by and get some uh, merch. Right over um, there, somewhere my during the show. Partner. I have after merch, show. too. It's here. It's here, too? Um, if you go on your phone, on candymuse.com. <laughs> <laughs> See, that one, you don't even have to stand up. So um, she's got merch, too. All right, let's get back to the show. All right. That was wow. real. That was fun. Yes. Really fun. Yes. All right. What's your favorite? <laughs> well, there's so many to watch. There, yeah, there's still. so many to wa watch still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were but, supposed to say Nasha, bitch. Well, Nasha's was <laughs> good. I see Nasha Flamenco every week, bitch. <laughs> uh, Ru RuPaul looked over in her uh, season 15 promo look. RuPaul looked amazing. I think out of the, the entire season, my favorite looks from RuPaul. This one, and then the one she had, the, the teal dress with the, the gold jewelry. I think oh, she looked yeah. alva. And, you know, I love that old man, so. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question for you all. How do we feel about the, um, doing the talent show and performing a song of their own? How does, how does that, how do you judge that? Because for me personally, I'm just asking, just me personally, because yeah. what we do is drag. We get up here and we lip sync. So what, at what point makes it even more, you know, of a talent. Well, I think th there was discourse today on Twitter about um, a lot of talents, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of the talent shows recently have been uh, original songs um, and lip syncs. And I think that people don't see that as talent. But here's my thing. It is not easy to learn choreography and do your own song in front of the judges. What we do on the road is lip syncing. Now, if I could blow fire out of my ass, I would do it on the stage. But I can't do that, so I'm not gonna try it on the main stage, you know what I mean? And I think people expect so much of us because let's be real, All-Stars 2 and All-Stars 3 set the bar really high for talent shows. And unfortunately, now I'm not saying we can't live up to that because I thought, you know, we haven't seen the rest of our, our talent show yet, but so far, I think it's sickening. I mean, Monica, you know, giving us sexy, Giving us the, the I don't give a fuck war, you know, soak and clock. But to me personally, to create your own song is a talent. Now, not everyone thinks that. So. I, I, I have an appreciation for the fact that she puts herself in a vulnerable place and say, I'm going to do my own thing and go ahead and do that. Because in this environment, this drag race environment, it's already hard doing other people's things. Imagine doing your own, you know what I mean? So kudos to Monica doing her own shit um, because this is the thing, you can get caught up exactly the same way that Jimbo was doing with her lip sync. She was watching someone on the screen saying, I wanna spin in a dress like those girls do. And Monica didn't do that. Monica said, bitch, I ain't gonna spin. I don't do no split. I'm fucking beautiful. Because let me tell you, when she came out, we all gagged, yeah, right? she looks so she good. She looks so stunning yeah. when she was on stage. So stunning. And she's just like, I'm going to be true to me and what I do. And that's it. And I totally. applaud that. And I wasn't just saying about her. I was, you know, James had an original song as well. So I was just curious what your thoughts were on yeah. having an original and song in, in this talent show. And James did second. it. I think James did it perfect it to what very she does. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like, let me highlight what I don't know how to do, I don't split, I don't this, I don't that, you know what I mean? And it was funny, it was cute. Yeah, I think that people really, the talent show, when I look at the talent show, there's so many um, parts of the show that are specific, and the talent show is really this open moment where you can kind of really do anything. And so I think when it's a song and a dance and it's looking pretty, it's entertaining and it is a talent and it's taking all kinds of things, it's maybe just not unexpected. And so it's in, sometimes in the surprise and in kind of showing people what they didn't know they wanted that there is a little bit um, maybe more excitement. So I, I do think that 
that there is something, of course, in talent. In pr- oh, you're looking at my... Look at your pussy, bitch. <laughs> there, there, you there's see? kids that now watch that, this. She forgot to, to, to put on panties. Also, <laughs> rem- remember, you're, you're, you're watching um, the variety show right now with the lenses of we're at the end of the season. We prepared these for the very first episode, or what we thought would be the very first episode, you know, where we, where we come out the gate. Like, mm-hmm. this is what we've been working on since we've left and shit. Now, at the end of the season, people are like, oh, you're going to bring that for the end of the season? And it's like, well... This was initially it was for the planned beginning. Along. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget that with original music, you could control your beeps, your bops, your this, your that. You, they gave us a list of music to choose from, which, yeah. by the way, is... Horrible music. Horrible. Well, so, there, there was a Rosalia song in there. There was what? A Rosalia song. A Rosa- oh, there was a Ro- But, like, <laughs> it's funny because it was like a Rosalia, but it was like only this part of it. Like, there was so many restrictions. So it's like you had to take a risk. So what I did, like, mine was like kind of instrumental. It did have J-Lo singing in it. Submitted it, and then they they got the rights to be able to use it. But it was like... I mean, and I, and the only reason I think they did that was because I got cast so late. I think it's the only reason that they did that because everybody else got a fucking list and everyone had to do music from that list or original music. I love that they gave y'all backup dancers. How, how, how much time did y'all have to rehearse for this? Four months. <laughs> right before, honestly, <laughs> right, right before going on set, four months. Yeah, so before going on set, they email us, tell us there's a talent show coming on. They send the dancers to our cities, and we rehearse with them. And then RuPaul I actually gets zoomed you. You are a motherfucking lie, like, bitch. I was no, I was like, wait, what? With everything on Drag Race, is really, really quick. So you get about half an hour the night of rehearsal, and then maybe like half an hour the day of. And you, they kind of like they give everyone a fair amount of time. Uh, within 12 girls so everyone has a good amount of time also it is it's not told to but it is a known fact if you know you're bringing your song you need to bring at least choreography with you that you can teach the dancers it's not like they're coming up with choreo and then they're teaching you you have to teach them you're teaching them yeah 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 there was what's the choreographer that's on set what's his name um um I don't know uh anyway there's a choreographer on set (laughs) Um, Good story. He's, he's been he's been on previous seasons. He's Latino, small. He's real. He's real like shady. She's you know which one I'm talking about. Is it you? No, it's not me, but um, <laughs> but um, Candy. Oh God, I got it. Well, um, he uh, I heard. <laughs> so I had heard. <laughs> I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to. Um, I don't know how to bounce back from this. <laughs> Anyways, I thought Monica um, was coming. Anyway, there's somebody on set. No, it's not him. It's somebody else that um, just helps you with your vision. Basically, you have a vision, and while you being on stage, it's kind of difficult to say. Well, I want somebody here and here. Or if you say you want somebody here, here, there's someone to be like. That's. That's not really highlighting you. Maybe switch it around. So you get like assistance, like like that kind of assistance. And production is great too when it comes yeah. to the talent show because they give us a budget to get props and stuff. Oh, yeah. So they're really great at like bringing yeah. your vision. I'm telling you, if you want a live horse, they will find a live horse and bring it to us. Oh, no, set. totally. So everyone had the same. I found a live horse right here. Everyone. <laughs> oh, <hey! laughs> Who so, got ketamine? No. So every. <laughs> No, not here. Later, later. I want to ask you this. Did you guys each do the do it one time or two times? Two times. Two times. And how long was it roughly all the way through that, like, one run through? Because we only saw a minute. My talent was a minute and seven seconds, and it did, they did cut it. it. That was less. That was, like, probably 50 seconds of it. It's so funny because it's, so, it's going by on, on TV so quick. And I didn't realize when we were there how many hours it takes to film a talent show. It took at least, like, four and a half hours. Oh, yeah, it's long. And we did... Did we break for lunch? We, did we break or did we go straight through it? We might, we might have break for lunch or something. I, mean, I don't know. But there I were times, you guys remember all of there that. There were times so that I feel like, well, this is a thing, Jimbo. I was sitting there thinking, I'm going to tell Roscoe's everything. Ah! <laughs> so, of course. Oh um, my God. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, there were times that we would have to break and we're like, can't we just get fucking through this? Like, can we just do it? But, you know, 
cameramen have to stop. It's, it's union, girl. It's union. union. So they got to stop. They got to record. Uh, they got to eat and do all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so, yeah. But besides that, let, why don't we go back to the talent show and see more talents? Well, yep. yes. Yeah, let's do it. it. All right. Nice. Make some noise for Candy and Jimbo. Yeah. Yeah. It's like family reunion up in here. <laughs> yeah. That was a cute surprise. That was so fun. I love that y'all got to participate in that. Yes, I, I love a talent show. That's when I used to do drag in my hometown. I didn't do drag out at bars. I was in talent shows. That's where I would sit at home and make my costume, come up with my number, and go and win my local talent shows. And so this is, yeah, I won three for I to Drag Race. One for uh, Tiny Tina, the six-breasted bodybuilder. <laughs> One um, for uh, Jem. She, once she, she apparently was a prostitute that fell in harm times. And so um, I do a number as Jem, and I had big creamy titties, which is where this came from. So, <laughs> But that time, the first time I did it, I brought this bald man on stage, and I made this Sunday on top of his head. <laughs> Girl, you should have brought RuPaul on stage. <laughs> No, you know, I remember uh, when we were told we weren't competing on this episode and we knew it was a talent show. We were like, fuck. Because we obviously prepare. And I remember when we created... So we obviously get told about the talent show before we go on there. And you, you want to create something so good. So I remember when we were first coming out with our ideas for the talent show, I originally wanted to sing because I don't know how many of you know this, but I actually just sing... Um, and I originally sent in, uh, I did Nightgowns for Sasha Valor a few years ago, and I sang this song called Rise Like a Phoenix, which was fucking amazing, and I sent it in, and they were like, well, we can't clear that, baby. So I was like, ooh. <laughs> so I went um, with one of Alaska's producers, Nick Labs. We created this whole, like, elaborated, dramatic song, and in the end, you know what you just feel? You were like, Tiva, this, ain't the, this is not the one. I was like, I can't bring this to All Stars. Um, so a week before we left to All Stars, I still had no talent show, and I messaged Ocean Kelly, who also did La La Song. Shout out to Ocean Kelly, the, I mean, sickening fucking producer, queen, amazing. And I was like, look, bitch, I leave in six days. I know it's last minute, but I need a minute song. And she sent me that track, and I was like, oh, bitch, this is over. And then RuPaul was like, y'all not competing this week, and I was like, ooh. Well, that was that. <laughs> I, I think Ocean Kelly also made Heidi's diss track, too, that we haven't heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not, yeah. Talking, about, we're not talking about that. <laughs> I, well, since you brought it up. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> no, just joking. She's never going to play it, but it is amazing. <laughs> oh, you heard the diss track? I, I did hear a little snippet of it. It's so good. <laughs> it was, Heidi made a diss track about me. <laughs> but to be fair, she told me about it. She was like, just she so did. you know. She did. So, by the way, I love Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> we love Heidi. We miss her. Um, but I think it was everything. So, favorites and non favorites Okay, now I want to ask y'all, who was your least favorite? Ooh. Well, that's... <laughs> Wait, what did you guys say? <laughs> I Is heard... Oh, my God, I heard... I, I don't even want to say it out loud. Um, it it oh, rhymes... Oh, wow, you guys. It, <laughs> oh, I uh, thought you were saying uh -huh. Texas. Um... Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> beautiful gowns. Okay, no, so, um, I think I, Heidi listen. really just, you know. Yeah. I you think get, Heidi was the worst one? I didn't one. get the mark with Heidi. Girl, I think Heidi was the best one. She got a vacation at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so are we going to answer that question? No, we're not going to, not. right? Okay. No. 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 The audience you? already did. The I audience already did. Great. The audience Everyone did good. I think we're all good, yeah. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great talent show. Every, you know what I did love about it is that everyone is so different, right? Everyone's so different, um, which is always good because it's like when you get 10 dancers or you know what I mean? It's the same shit over and over again, but it's nice to see uh, that everyone was kind of true to their brand and different, yeah? Down, yeah uh, fucking agreed. Jimbo went to fucking clown school, so <laughs> the clownery <laughs> jumped out. Yeah. We I were, mean, it was very difficult. And we were all literally <laughs> like just looking like, what is going on? Here? Because we see it from the side. Yeah. yeah. So we just see things being pulled out of places. Yeah, yeah, so we're like, what? what the fuck is going on here? So yeah, it was it was fun to watch. Yeah, when I first did it, I, I finished and they were like, 
So how did that go? <laughs> I said, I went great. They're like, okay, good, okay, good. <laughs> not them not knowing how it was that supposed was, to that go. Was, like, so are you done? Well, that was the re- that, <laughs> it was the rehearsal. And part about clowning is that I don't like to do things ahead of time. The whole fun of it is that it's a discovery in the, in the moment together. And so I had never had the whole costume on. I'd never done the thing. I'd never even tried to do it until I did it in front of them in that rehearsal. And the first time I did it, the um, cream blew the entire Sunday off the stool. <laughs> and the stool was empty. And I just finished by putting a crushed cherry on the stool and stop, like crushing with a spoon. And that was the end. That's when they were like, so how did that go? <laughs> I was like, well, I think it's going to get better, but it's, I went good. <laughs> well, we loved watching it. Um, <laughs> it was very interesting to see all of it come together. Um, okay, so do we have uh, favorites? Did you guys want to choose uh, some favorites? I thought La La Rie. La La Rie. La La Rie. <laughs> Valerie was everything. And oh we God. have to give it to Jessica Wilde, bitch. Yes, yes. absolutely. The Jessica was whip. Jessica was so good, too. She was out there, honey. I live for that. There were a few um, favorites, too. Even, like, honestly, watching it here on TV, watching it in person was so different. Yeah. Not, not that you weren't amazing on TV, but, like, watching you in person, I was like, oh, fuck, bitch. Yeah. Go off. I thought it was really good. Uh, um, You, Lala, Jessica. Like, there were some girls that were like, work, bitch. Yeah. I think I love Darian. She stuck to her roots. You know, she's a comedian. She is so funny and awkward, but she went out there and did the damn thing. It's so funny. So what would you guys do? Ooh. What would you guys do for your talent? Let's, I let's hear. I can't let's tell hear. you because I can't tell you. Let's hear it, bitch. I mean, if they, provide, <laughs> if they provide backup dancers, I have a couple eight-piece combos back here I can throw out there, yes. <laughs> so would, you guys would do original music, yes? <laughs> no. Uh, well, hearing what you said. Of course I would. Yeah, yeah hearing what you, you would, said, that you have to tailor your music around what they can give you. So, yeah, probably original yeah. track. Oh, girl, yeah. you get, I'm telling you, if you wanted to fly on the ceiling, they would make you fly on the ceiling. Mine would be some sort of like, kind of like a music with, like um, Monica Beverly Hills had, kind of like an upbeat house track um, dance type of tea. I'm a tap dancer as well, so, and I can't do it here because the floor is not it, um, but maybe one day you'll see it on a show. I'm a tap dancer too. Tap, tap, tap in. Golly, I love to tap dance. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, have to show, I have to show you a video later upstairs because when you Is it that out, one you showed me of your bum hole? No. <laughs> yes. You show me that every time. Jimbo. Like just, look, it winks. Shh. In a few seconds, it winks. I was like, I saw it wink. I saw it wink. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, let's go right back to the show. <laughs> All right. We got some critiques. Yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, we forgot. Uh, it was funny. There was a producer. Her name is Mandy. And uh, Kahana was doing her routine, and they had a full blown out like argument <laughs> because Kahana was doing her uh, the backflips, and so they're like, "Hey, we want you to." Do you remember this, Candy? Oh, maybe no. May- I don't think Candy remembers. Um, but <laughs> so she's doing she's doing her routine, and Mandy's like, "No!" Like stops her in the middle of doing like a flip, but you. You can't stop in the middle of the air, but she also startled her, so she didn't, like, she's like, why would you do that? So when she landed it, she's like, what the fuck? Why the fuck would you do? Like, and they literally go into this full-blown argument, all because um, Mandy was, like, interrupting her going into this flip. And we're, I, I don't know what we were doing, but all of a sudden we just hear Kahana just like, this bitch, da da da. We're like, oh my God, what happened? And then she explains everything to us. It was crazy. And that was during the times that we got that you were asking about uh, how long it took like to rehearse mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, that was during her rehearsal time. It was absolutely insane. It I was find a good that one. suspicious. Kahana is involved with another argument. She loves that this season. Um, so to bring it back, Candy Wait, Jimbo, the in the moment when Kahana was confronting Heidi and the things were coming to light, um, someone said, a person said one thing and that person said they did not. We know the record's been cleared up. We know things are good. But how was the intensity in the room when shit was going down for both of y'all? 
Um, well, I mean, that situation went on for like a good like hour and a half. You can tell when we're like at the beginning, we're like starting to paint, and then at the end of that altercation, like we are like full faced. Um, what I thought interesting, and I've been real quiet about this all season long. What I thought interesting was, I don't, and I'm gonna tell you this honestly, like, um, <laughs> like, shout out the tea, the real tea. Yeah. Let's hear the yeah. tea. So, we were bored. <laughs> I was bored on set. I was fucking bored. And I said, I went to Jimbo one day while she was doing something. I was like, Jimbo, I said, I'm bored. So, I'm gonna go tell the girls your competition. Jimbo, Jimbo said, don't fucking do that. And I was like, well, I am. So one day we were in the van. Jokingly, I was like, girl, you know, I was That's like, try, bitch. I was like, you know, Jimbo's big competition, like, get rid of her, y'all. Like, everyone in there went like this. <laughs> Which is why I found interesting that when they were calling her. Now, I, Heidi did not go like that. I will say that, you know? She was like, oh. But everyone in that van, there were multiple girls, said, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Who is in the van with so, you? Oh, but hold on, hold on. So then the whole thing comes out with Heidi, right? And now I'm not denying that I said anything. What I'm denying or saying, I didn't say I'm gunning for this bitch because I was never gunning for Jimbo because if I was gunning for Jimbo, I could have sent her home last week, correct? Now... When, once Heidi left in the van ride back home that night, there was a queen, James Mansfield, <laughs> that said, I thought standing home Jimbo was like Fight Club. We all knew it. We were just we were going to say it. So I was like, oh. So when everything came out, the whole episode, uh, uh, you know, Heidi was like, I spoke it to multiple girls, and I'm like, oh, so the girls, are, the girls are acting like nothing happened, girl. Like you bitches was like on that fucking set saying. <laughs> now here's the thing. I was fucking bored, so therefore, and 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 also, I think the the whole thing. I think a lot of people think like, oh, Heidi left because of that situation, and Heidi has cleared this up. Heidi had checked out a while before that situation happened, that just amplified it times 10, you know? So it was, she was ready to go. But I found it interesting that a lot of the girls are keeping real quiet, and I know that Alexis backtracks and says, oh, I don't really remember. You were in the van too, bitch. And you said, <laughs> <laughs> like every bitch in the, so I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, it's real interesting, but, 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 if it's gonna give me all the attention, then maybe throw all the blame on me. I don't really give a fuck. Her middle name is producer for a reason, y'all. Y'all heard Hello. it right here. Hello, and listen, it's no tea. Were we or were we not bored? Uh, well, well, I mean, I was now, now we're production. <laughs> now we're production, but with the girls. The girls, every time they had an opportunity, it was a fucking sob story. And I was like, my God, we are on All Stars, on Drag Race, to the point where people are telling y'all, cut the fucking sob stories out. Stop recording. You know? And so we were born. I was like, girl, let, let's turn shit up in here. Because clearly, no one's going to do it. <laughs> Nasha was gone. <laughs> Fucking, uh, 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 Monica. The girls that I kikied with that would have stirred shit up were already gone. Jimbo, compared to her other seasons, was playing nice. Yes or no? Yes. You know? Alexis was crying every other weekend. Kasha and Darian weren't doing nothing. So I, Girl. So I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks, bitch. At the end of the day, I was bored. And I told Jimbo what I was going to do. And like no, I said... No, but actually what happened was... That was that was days before. And I said, don't ever do that. Why would you ever do that? And so then I said... Please, and then... I said, please, please, please don't do that. You're going to make people think that. And then she said... And she was like, okay, I won't. So then when that happened, I said, Heidi, are we okay? I noticed some tension when you thought that my Fruity Patootie dress wasn't Fruity Patootie enough. No, I and wish it wasn't. She no. said, <laughs> <laughs> and she said, we're okay, but you ought to check with your sister Candy. At which time I went over to Candy, and if you were not such an idiot, you would have said, "Bitch, we told I, you told you were gonna do that." Instead, I go to you. Did you say you were gonna eliminate me? And she was like, "What? I never said that, bitch." Because let the tea she is, said, I would never say that. Those specific bitch. words I never said. 
if you would have sat there and said, Candy, you said gym was competition, we all, all were like, oh yeah, yeah. But you said, uh, Candy said, uh, you're, you're gunning for her. I never said I was gunning for her. Those words did not leave my mouth. But when you all said, <laughs> you oh. did say it, bitch, in the van. <laughs> no, I wasn't gunning for you. I said, y'all gotta get rid of her. <laughs> you were making that. You know what? And now I wish I would have. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my girl. But that was one thing that we did talk about on the couch where I told the girls because it came up and I was like, I had the opportunity to send Jimbo home last week. If I wanted the bitch gone, I could have had her gone. Every elimination in that fucking workroom happened because what the fuck can't you? Every bitch followed every word I said in that workroom. Anytime we came to eliminations, the girl, I'll be. She was the silent assassinator. If I wanted Jimbo gone, I could have been like, production, give it to her. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But. It was, it, was, it was all a good joke and, and then good TV. And I, when we went on tour in the UK, me and Heidi, we spoke about because there was good, the conversation of All-Stars I came up in the, uh, the tour bus the night before, and Heidi was feeling like some type of way about it because she was like, girl, you lied in my face, right? So we went we, the next day in, the, in the, the dressing room. You know, I was like, Heidi, girl, what's good? And we got into it, and we got over it. And guess what we're doing now? We're going on a cruise yeah, in February. Cruise. So make sure you come through. But it's, it's all in good fun. And I think that sometimes people forget if you watch back season two, three, four, and five, the girls were fighting. The girls were having a good time. The girls were making iconic television. Tell me something iconic that happened on 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> not, not on the girls. You were but on girl, 13. <laughs> are we not making TV? Oh my God. Is this who we are? Is this what we represent? I grew up watching Flavor of Love and Charm School. I don't know what y'all watch in Canada. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> all of it makes sense now. It all makes, it makes sense. so much sense. Girl, I need to go on Big Brother. That's, not, or That's fucking, what I want to do. Or Survivor. That's what I need to go. <laughs> Speaking go of good... large brother. <laughs> Speaking of good TV, let's see who the judges are gunning for for this top two fame game spots. Let's do it. Get back into it. Bitch, I'm going let's to drag it. race to drive the vans, honey. <laughs> Yes, 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 oh yes, yes. God. All right. How, how does it feel watching it, knowing that's it? It's one more week. That's I it. can't um, believe it. I wonder if that's the actual crown or just a random one. I, I don't remember seeing a crown there that night. But, there uh, wasn't a crown there that night. There wasn't, right? I don't know where they got that from. That's actually, I hope it's not that one. That's kind of ugly. Um, no. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. You'll just have to look at it on me, so. <laughs> yeah. When she rips it off my head, jealous bitch. No, I mean, we, me and Jimbo, you know, we, we filmed the show so long ago, and we've been sitting on the final two secret for almost over a year now, so we just did press last week in New York for the final two, and it kind of brought all those feelings up again. I was like, oh shit, yeah, w this is happening. So now that we're finally here, I'm just like, oh my God, you know, I think um, people have a, a preconceived notion of what's going to happen in the finale. To me, everything that we do throughout the entire season is great. And then when we get to the finale, it's a clean slate and how you deliver that night and what you bring to the runway and what you bring to that final challenge. And in the end, what RuPaul likes. I think I cannot wait for y'all to witness the fucking finale that we put together next week because it is so fucking good. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, like whatever happens, whether it's me or Jimbo or RuPaul wants to crown all 12 girls, you know, we all walk out as winners. At the end of the day, we all walk out with amazing careers. And listen, one of my goals when I came back to All Stars, I, I finished uh, uh, first runner up on my original season. And I was like, well, I can't finish under that. That's, that's so fucking whack, you know? So now finally being here again, final two, it's amazing because. We put so much work, but not only us, we have people and teams behind us, you know. I have my amazing house of news back at home that put so much work and effort into our packages, whether you like it or not. We work so hard to put together a fucking amazing TV show so that y'all can enjoy. It's really the Super Bowl of fucking faggotry, and it is incredible. <laughs> Yeah, what she said. <laughs> no, but I want to hear it from my partner, Brady, who helps me so much. He's here. Brady, where are you? 
Well, Brady. He's, I mean, he's selling merch. I, I think he's, he's selling, selling merch. He's selling merch, but I couldn't do it without my beautiful partner, Brady. He travels around with me everywhere. He takes care of me and fixes my hair up and gets me stuff. And he's just absolutely amazing. And it does take a village. There's all kinds of designers and friends and brothers and family and everybody that really puts all of their love and energy and support behind the scenes. So it's just so exciting to be here with you and for it to be a celebration for all of our people that have helped guests here. So thank you to everybody for cheering us on. Absolutely. And, you know, even with the, with the fame game, um, it is pretty cool. Uh, kudos to uh, them doing the fame game because it allowed all these designers that put so much hard work and work under, I mean, I'm talking about short periods of time that are given to complete these uh, garments, these gowns, these costumes, all these wigs, and they came up with them. They finished them. Um, some even have to be shipped to, to the set. I mean, they go through some shit, especially when they don't have contact with us anymore. It, they, they are really, really the backbone to it because without these designers that work so, so hard and wig, wig makers, the girls would not look as good as they do. So kudos to them and shout out to uh, the di designers that work. I don't know who you were. Mine is Joshua, Jeffrey, Monique. I love you guys. G does my hair. Yes. And I also have a uh, fantasy wig that does my hair too. Shout out to your uh, designers. Who, who Girl, does your uh, Pieretta, Jeffrey Kelly, Diego Montoya, uh, uh, Hats by Carlos, Madeline Hatter, who I've worn her hair the entire fucking season. I mean, when I tell you, I know sometimes it may look like we may wear the same silhouette. It is so hard prepare for the show you are one person getting ready 25 fucking looks to go up there and be judged by the entire world it may look like a fucking a leotard to you but it's a damn good made fucking leotard bitch and I look delicious in it so shout out to everyone that helped me and also uh, Priyanka Priyanka actually sent me some wigs before I left the all star so shout out to Priyanka bitch <laughs> she Priyanka, told us you didn't send me a wig Jimbo Jimbo who, how about you who, who made your stuff well, um, I design a lot of my stuff and work with my team of people back in Victoria. So Jane Richmond, Alice, um, my friend Sarah. We worked on a fashion collection before all this. We worked in theater and, and film together. And then um, Billy Lamore did a lot of my hair and um, all kinds of designers and artists. It was like 50 people all together or something that was um, you know, making patterns and prints. And like, you know, I told you about my, uh, like the Fruity Patootie dress. That's all custom made went to somebody they had that fabric design or I had it designed and then printed and then sewn and so it takes like so many fucking people to make all these things happen and so it's incredible yeah and because they will kill me if I don't of course Brandon and Tsunami who have been my backbone throughout this entire season let me tell you I try to pretend that I don't see everything online. I see the discourse. I see what people say about me. I see the negative thing. I see it. When Dragons posted Team Jimbo, Team Candy, I see the likes. It doesn't bother me. It bothers the people behind me. And that's what bothers me the most. So they are truly the backbone. And, and every single... Hi, you pussy bitch. And every single week, you know, they're there making sure that I'm not reading comments. And let me just tell you this. I really don't give a fuck what any bitch all I gotta say about me because the people that matter to me are the people that come out and support us. And you know, I mean, it's been such an incredible season and like, we have been waiting a year <laughs> and I cannot believe that it is finally over next week. I mean, all over next week. Okay, so if there's, we're gonna, we're gonna get a little sappy real quick because you guys are best friends. You've had an amazing season. <laughs> If there's one thing that you haven't said to each other that you can say to each other now, what you lying you fucking say? bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I tell you, me and Jimbo what would have, you say? have done it all together. I mean, done it all together. What was that one guy? What Wait was, a minute. What, 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 what was, was that his name? Like, what was his name? I don't I remember. What was his name? Well, I can't remember. He messaged me on Instagram, though. It he was did. somewhere near Vancouver. We weren't about to install. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, my yeah. God. No, you know, <laughs> we. I think we touched base a little about this next week, but... No, I, I touched his base. You touched his back. That is very true. <laughs> I made sure he was turning, so I was not touching Jim Boss. Like, girl, oh my God, that's my sister. <laughs> Anyways, enough. Sorry, YouTube. Um, no, you know, I am such, I think I'm, I'm not blind. I'm like the rest of you. I've, Jimbo messaged me right when uh, season 13 
aired and I was getting all the hate and she said, I am such a fan of you, I cannot wait to watch you and I was, we had just watched Canada's Drag Race um, when I got back from filming 13 and I was like, oh my God, I'm such a big fan of you. So now, and I'm still such a big fan, even though we're competitors and someone's going to be rich next week and someone's going to be poor. You know, I am <laughs> such a fan of Jimbo. I think your creativity is incredible. The way you view life, there was not a person on that set behind the camera, uh, anywhere, that Jimbo did not know their name. Jimbo would have conversations with every single person on that set, and she is one of the kindest people I've ever met. And I know that at the beginning of the season, people were saying a lot of shit about her, and even to this day, maybe some people don't like her. <laughs> but to me, she is just such a sweetheart. And I mean, anyone that has worked with her and the girls on the cast can attest to this. Jimbo is just, uh, you know, she's kind. Not cuntier than me, because RuPaul, <laughs> crown me, please! <laughs> yeah, Jimbo, what would you say to Candy? Well, Candy is, of course, just an incredible, hilarious comedian. She is so fucking talented and just so sickening in her fantasy. It's intoxicating. And I think that's a magical Or toxic. Or, or toxic. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you put the toxic in intoxicating. Ah. <laughs> but um, no, I do admire so much about your just ability to be yourself and to um, just be so entertaining and just, I love it. I think it's just amazing what, watching um, what you're gonna do next and how sickening you are. And you know, I wanna put on a fucking bodysuit and whip my hair around and looks like you, I do. I'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love the whole uh, best friends race this season. I love yeah, that it, you it guys uh, got to, to bond because I mean, you were working together before, right? Uh, really quick, are we, are, yeah, are we, do, is there an untucked or there is not an untucked? There is an untuck. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye to the front bar, and we're gonna start playing music in the front bar and have a kick at the front bar. But if you wanna stick around and watch Untucked and do Q and A, we're gonna do that back here. Um, so let's go ahead and go to Untucked and Q and A in between. And bye, everyone at the front bar. Have cocktails. Bye, bye everybody at the front bar. Where are they? Where is the front bar? At the front of the bar. <laughs> at the front. <laughs> we're in the back, Jimbo. Bye. Well, yes. <laughs> So there was an episode, Candy, where everything you were just like not amused and you're like, work. work. <laughs> and so <laughs> we've been doing that all season when we're just like, whatever. Like, oh, girl, work. work. Now, Candy, you made a comment that um, how the audience was feeling was similar to how y'all felt in the workroom. Were y'all over Alexis at this time or just over the, the long drawn out <laughs> response? Like, well, I, didn't make a, I did not make a comment. <laughs> no, you know, listen, we love Alexis. She's a very dramatic um, theatric person. Storyteller. Storyteller. You know the movie The Never Ending Story? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but she, I mean, y'all had her here at Vasco's. Girl, you, y'all, y'all saw. Um, but she's great. Work. You know, <laughs> you know what it is, too? I feel like in front of a camera, it's just a different story. You're, you, you get caught up in the moment. You want to give good TV. You're talking a little more than, you know what I mean? And then she was already so insecure going into this that I think she was overcompensating for it. Talking more, yeah. being emotional, just those kind of things. I mean... Which is, there's, I think also, uh, there's nothing wrong with being overly emotional. Not at all. I, if you want to cry, cry. Ten times, go for it. But my God. <laughs> You know what it was? You know what? It, it wasn't even it wasn't even the fact that she cried. Cause you wanna cry, go for it. Be emotional. But it's like, Alexis, um, I'm going through something right now. And she's like, <laughs> me too. Do you know what I mean? It was like one of those things. She's, where, she's an empath. She, yeah. Stop. Oh girl. So it, it it that's what it was. It was just bad timing. It was like Every time, Monica's literally spilling her guts, and she's like, well, I know for me, it's... And you're like, girl, we're, we're talking to Monica right now. <laughs> um, when Alexis was here, she did say that the, the show didn't shine any light on the relationship her and Jessica had. Was there any moments throughout the season that you wish would have got featured on the show more? Candy said, <laughs> Candy said what? Uh, that must have been... I don't remember seeing that relationship, but anyways... Um, <laughs> I think for the most part, you know what I wish? Okay, 
Also, I wish Aisha and Monica hadn't got home so early. Because what they didn't show on this episode specifically, when all the girls came back, Kahana, Monica, you know, and then um, she was one of the brown girls too with us. Uh, we were just cutting up and keep keying. Like, the, we have a, a group chat called the Six Feet Feathers. All the girls, all the country girls. And we would just, girl, because we, we got each other, you know? So we would just, girl, just keep keying. Just, yes, yes, yes. just, girl, cunty. You wish they showed more of that with y'all. Yeah, because yeah. They, I feel like there was a lot of fun parts of the show and throughout the season that I feel that wasn't shown as much as we would have liked. Because I remember calling Jim at the beginning of the season and be like, wow, we're, we're really not getting any airtime. Like, the first five episodes were uh, talking heads of Heidi and Lala. And, you know, I was like, there were so many fun things. The drama was fun too, but there were so many fun things in the workroom that weren't shown. And I was like, oh, well, that sucks. Jimbo, but what about for you? Anything from the season that you wish they would have shown? Um, well, there was a funny moment in my lip sync with uh, Silky that when I have a balloon when I do Casper, there's a balloon in my butt. And so it gives like uh, almost like a slingshot. And when uh, Silky bent me over and she was humping me, the last thrust that didn't make the cut, probably because they didn't catch it, because it was so like just a surprise was she slingshotted me across the entire stage and I felt like a rag doll and just rolled to the edge of the stage and I popped back up and that's when I, I run over to her and keep dancing but that part was so funny I wish that they I wish that made it in but I think it happened so fast that it didn't get caught or something and obviously you, you never know what they're gonna show like with the lipstick with Priyanka I did a fucking cartwheel into split off the stage <laughs> bitch that yeah, ain't never right. happened <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the Q&A portion. Let's go ahead and start this. Do we have any cues? Yes, just raise your hand. Batty and I will make audience. our way around. And please think of the context and make them a great question, all right? I'm going to start right up here, and then I'll make my way this way. What is our name, beautiful? Uh, my name is Jake. What is your, or who is your question for? My question is for Jimbo. Hi, Jimbo. Hey, Jay. How are you? I'm doing good. I uh, had a question about you and your clowning, and it has to do with drag. Oh. Um, so we, as we saw tonight, you are so good at beautifully melding the art of drag and the art of clowning. And as a baby clown myself, I was wondering what uh, challenges have you found when it comes to like combining that art form? And do you have any tips for a little little baby little clown? Well, thank you. thank you for your question, and I love that you're a baby clown. The key to good clowning is really about doing your worst idea, and really it's all about not judging yourself in that moment and being a conduit for your audience and for whatever you're trying to serve them. And so really you're supposed to listen to the audience and really create a conversation and create a connection. So um, it's all about just being present and being truthful and um, letting people really see you, letting people in. A lot of times when people perform, sometimes they look above the audience because it's scary, but I try as often as I can when I'm performing to make eye contact and then really invite the audience into the performance. You gonna stand up? Thank you. All right, we got a question, question over here. Hi, my name is Richie. I'm here from Chicago. I love all three of you all. Um, my and, y and you, my love. <laughs> <laughs> My question's for Candy and Jimbo. How would you compare uh, this All-Stars experience compared to your pre previous season, so season 13 and UK versus the world? Um, honestly, it was so fun. I had a lot of fun on 13, especially because we were such a special season. It was the first COVID season to be filmed in the peak of the pandemic, so it was so special. Um, going back to All-Stars, it was the same camera crew, the same production, the same PAs. So it was being like, it was home. Girl, I was doing whatever the fuck I wanted on that set. No one could tell me nothing. I was having a good old time. And I know a lot of girls sometimes leave Drag Race with um, personal negative experiences. I love Drag Race. To me, it's like summer camp. We get to get paid, and do drag every single day on the main stage in front of RuPaul, who looks beautiful in front of you. And sometimes you get these, these moments, like um, be, uh, when, before all the girls walked in here uh, the, on this episode, they were uh, fixing the cameras. So me, RuPaul, and Jimmer were in the workroom playing charades for like 15 minutes and having a good old time. So there are those special moments that you take away from Drag Race. So I had a blast. It was a great experience. Um, 
And I would do it all over again if I could. <laughs> and for me, I was, I was so nervous my time on Kansas Drag Race. It went good, but you know, there was obviously, I wanted to be in the finale. And then UK versus the world came, it was going so great, and then came to an abrupt finish. And it made me realize that really anything can happen on any day there. And so don't save anything. You can't really save it and say like, oh, I'm gonna do this later. And um, so I really wanted to keep that in mind. And when Katya was there, she gave some great advice and she said, don't leave here with any regrets do everything that you wanted to do here. And, um, and so I really felt like I got a chance to do that, that I was there and on the show long enough to really show as much as I wanted to show, and that was the big difference this time. Hell yeah. Our next question's right over here, Divas. What's your name and who's our question for? Just hold it. Okay. Um, my name is Nick. I'm from the South Side of Chicago. Hey, Nick. First, I want to say thank you to Roscoe's Viewing Party for putting Chicago out there because Chicago has good drag and the show sleeps on us. Second, shout out to Nasha because she's a continental winner and the show also sleeps on Nasha. As a gay man that's Hispanic that wants to do male pageant, you truly are an inspiration and they really are sleeping on you. My question is for Nasha, Candy, and Jimbo. It's kind of a two-parter. A. Imagine if All Stars 8 was a partner situation. What previous Rue girl would you pick? And then what other girl outside of Rue would you pick to be your partner in both situations? Work. work. That's fierce. Work. Work. You but you can see the tone is different. You're like, work. work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, a pre I think I would go with either Got Mick or Simone. And a girl outside of RuPaul's Drag Race, I would go with my drag daughter, Tsunami Muse, yes. um, who, is, who just did a coach campaign. Right. <laughs> so that's for me. I would go with Brooklyn Heights. <laughs> I would get the Queen of the North herself. And uh, if it was a non ru girl, who would I go with? I would go with my mom. I'd say, come on, mom. Let's go. Let's do this, uh. mama. I would go <laughs> with Jinx Monsoon. Oh, so and you're a cheater. You want to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely go with Jinx Monsoon. So, um, yeah, Jinx Monsoon. And then non uh, Rue Girl, I would go with, if you don't know her, please look her up. Her name is Aurora Sexton. Okay. okay. Yeah. She's uh, originally from Ohio, then moved to Chicago, and then now in LA. She's ridiculous ridiculously talented and so funny and makes all her own costumes and then I could just rely on her to make everything. Wow. <laughs> I love that question. Thank you for that. All right, all right so we got one more back what, here. Uh, let's, why don't, let's finish Untucked and then we'll do some more questions. Because sure. we're going oh. back and forth. We'll do more. She said, fuck my question. <laughs> we're we're going to come back. Sorry, girl. All right, we got through Untucked. We have any more questions out there? We're going to go to We Betty. do, right back here. Hello, my name Hello. is Esther. Um, you guys had said that you had to decide on your variety show act at the beginning of the season. Do you think that production would have allowed any changes upon reflecting? Um, and would any of you have changed your act at all looking back on it? No, because everything, thank you for the question. Um, everything has to be pre-approved and your tracks have to be sent in, so there's no like physical way to change your, um, I mean, unless, I, I have heard of girls like Kokomo Trees, yeah. I think she switched her, but I'd, I cannot see a possible way to change my talent yeah. show there, so. No. Coco's, they didn't get the clearing on her song, that's why she had to change that. Oh, well, let's see. I, yeah, everything oh, has to be cleared, go. there's lawyers and shit, so yeah. So it's too much of a process for you to like last minute be like, hey, I have to change this. So I don't think it's actually a possibility, really. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Work. Who knows? I'm so happy with what happened. I, like I said, I love the talent show. I love thinking of whatever you can do in that moment to make Mama Ru laugh. And uh, so I wouldn't have done anything different. Um, and I don't know if I would, they would have let us change it. All right, our next question's right over here. What's our name and what is our question? Hi, I'm Wilma Fistfit from Chicago. You all hey, look Wilma. beautiful, love the green Nisha, but I like to ask the Queenses every time I'm here. 
No, hey, I'm you both, too. you guys look beautiful too. I love you, Jimbo. Love you, <laughs> Candy. I love how. <laughs> anyway, I like to ask the queens when I'm here if you guys stole anything while you're on the set of Drag Race. Yes. If you're able to take anything off set and get away with it. I think <laughs> Wait, no. no! Hold on! I, I, I stole a few things, I, and I'm gonna tell you a little secret about Miss Nation over here. I stole, um, I cut out half of the word groom wall. I stole a lipstick, I stole a crew jacket. Oh, anyways. <laughs> Nation! That was on, on the very last night, um, we were all there packing up the workroom and you know, everything has to come down and stuff. And there was, a, and me and Nation were just going, girl, when I say you're going around like stealing everything, there was a crew jacket behind like backstage and there was stuff inside of it, but we didn't look inside of it. So Nation took the jacket. It was, our, it was one of our PAs too. So Nation took the jacket and put it in her bag. <laughs> Mind you, I also took a jacket and put it in my bag. But Nation got clocked in the car because the PA was like, hey, that jacket has my keys in it. But it didn't. It was, no, but it didn't. It was a lie so that we could go look in it and get the keys. So she wanted to see who had the jacket. I had checked. There were no keys. So I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't find no jacket. And then, was it you? That, so somebody tricked. Because then she came up. She's like, Nation, I know you have it. I'm like, I don't have anything. And she's like, you have it. I'm like, I got eliminated. <laughs> Let me keep the fucking jacket, please. <laughs> She's like, give me the jacket. I'm like, fuck, and I had to give the jacket back. But yeah. And now, and also, the jacket doesn't even, it's not even my size. It's like a small, so it doesn't even fit me, but hey. Jimbo, did you take anything? What did I steal from set? I'm trying to remember. I think I, what did I steal? Who Tom's even fucking knows? Out. Lunch I, Oh yeah, they, you know, at the end, there's the uh, Anastasia Bologna. wall and the Sunday Riley. And of course you look at all that Girl. makeup there and they say, you know, well, for the sake of the show and it's in the background, you can't raid all that makeup, but- Oh, well, oh you, wait, hold on. So, <laughs> but once the show's done, it was basically supermarket sweeps and we ran over it. We were just like, <laughs> I'm taking all of that and just raided all the, the display. So look at this, remember the wall? It had the neon colors of fabric, right? So there were four different colors. So I took all four <laughs> colors, like all of it. I took all of it. And I sent it to uh, uh, one of the designers that I work with, Jeffrey. And I'm like, Jeffrey, sometimes I just send him things and I'm just like, when you get a chance, just make me something, blah, 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 whatever. So then we're at press week oh. and we're sitting there at press week and I'm like talking to Candy and I'm like, this fabric looks familiar. <laughs> It was the fabric I had sent Jeffrey that I had stole from set. He had used it for her fucking press look. Ooh. But I stole it, so I couldn't really get that Listen, mad about it. When I tell you, those girls racked up. I, I remember the, uh, the art department coming in to take down the Sunday Riley wall and the Anastasia wall, and they walked up and they were like, what happened, girl? Animals, savages, girl, they ransack that shit. Well, everything gets put in storage. Like, it's gonna, and these things that are like makeup and all that, that's gonna expire. I remember the PAs were like, man, I really like that lipstick. I'm like, which one? I'll grab it. Which one do you want? <laughs> so I was grabbing and giving makeup to all the PAs, all the assistants. I'm like, which one do you want? She's like, man, those brushes are expensive. I got you, four of them, just here. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> Nisha for the PAs work. Hi. Hi, my name is Kimberly. My question is for Jimbo. If you had made it to Snatch Game on UK vs. the World, who would you have done? Right on Snatch Game UK vs. the World, I was thinking I was going to do either Bobcat Goldthwait, which is like a, is a comedian from uh, Police Academy in the 80s, and, um, or I was going to do um, fucking Amy Sedaris. Uh, Jerry Blank. I was going to do Jerry Blank. So, yeah, those were the two. All right. Our next question's right up here. What is your name, Gorgeous, and who's your question for? My name is Amanda. My question is for Candy. Amanda. Candy, after the Rusical, after Joan the Rusical, how did Alexis Michelle go from crushing on Lala Ree to... Not crushing on Lala Ree and voting her off and then crushing on you. Could you please spill the tea, honeybee, on yes! how that happened? 
<laughs> Listen, he, the real tea is they actually didn't show this, but Alexis had been crushing on me the entire season. I mean, and Lala. Um, and there was this whole like story that we wanted to fuck each other and but nah and listen, I know what fetishes Alexis is into. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I mean, just between us girls, no, what yeah. do you mean, girl? No, I don't fetish shame, so um but um when <laughs> listen, when the whole thing came out where she was like, Oh, would you save me? And I was like, Yeah, of course I'll save you, girl. I think that whole thing of her saying like, oh, you know, we're, I feel we're getting closer was so that, oh my God. And this is something that they didn't show again in the couch where, um, you know, so, <laughs> here's some tea, y'all. Uh, during the top four uh, deliberation, when Jimmy was in the top, where Alexis told Jessica that she was, was not going to pick her lipstick, and then she told me that she was not going to pick my lipstick, and then she went to Jimbo and told Jimbo to pick my lipstick in the couch when, when Jessica was like, oh, you said you were going to pick uh, my lipstick. And Alexis was like, I didn't say that. And Jessica was like, yes, you did. So Alexis was buttering everyone up just, you know, so we can keep her there. Does she want to fuck me? Yes. Will I do it? Well, maybe so. <laughs> At three in the morning, anything goes, baby. Yes. Enough ketamine. Enough. Listen, I've seen some of your Sniffy's profile. I promise you, anything goes. <laughs> oh, no. Go ahead, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've Dude. got a question back here. Go for it. Hi, my name is Jay. Uh, two things. Hey, Jay. One, Candy, we met at Industry Memorial Day weekend. You were sitting on the couch. We had a lovely conversation. You were out of drag. I was definitely kid out. Yes, yes. <laughs> Love that. And then this mess, the question was for Jimbo. Really, how was your relationship with Pangina Heels? Oh, really? Well, it's really, I would say it's great. For me, it's kind of like, you know, there's two people. There's the characters, Jimbo Pangina, and then there's real, um, I don't even know what her boy name is, and Jimbo. But um, I always call her just Pangina all the time. But um, Pan. So in terms of the show, it's kind of fun thinking in terms of wrestling, keeping the story alive, pretending. It's kind of all fun to be like that fucking bitch. And um, it's all within the story of the show. And so um, I'd like to keep that, that alive. I like it. it's a little bit, it can't be all like nice, nice, and we're all just best friends. Like it is kind of fun for it to be like, yeah, I want to get her. But it's like not really true. It's just it's just fun. And then when I see her, we just laugh about it. And it's kind of fun. It's just a pretend rivalry like wrestlers where you kind of are coming for each other and you're laughing about it. And it's, it's just more interesting. I think drag queens, if drag queens are really too nice to you, then they probably don't like you that much. <laughs> if, ah. When they start being mean, that's when you're like, oh, you like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we All got right. time for uh, one last question. Yes. Our final question right here. What is your name and who's our question for? Hi, I'm Nick. My question Hi, give is me, for... Give me one second. There's a pretty bad storm that's going to hit, so if we lose power, if, oh, if, if, oh, if, yeah. stay seated and stay calm. Thank you, Sean. Not a big so deal, excited. but there is a pretty bad storm that's about to hit, like, in five, ten minutes, so... <laughs> yeah! It's monsoon season, y'all. And if stay the power seated. goes off... Stay I'm seated. Excited. Take off a shirt or two, whatever you want. Girl, I'm stealing wallets like Chanel. All right, come on. All right. Name and question one more time, babe. Hi, I'm Nick, and my question is for Jimbo. Hey, Nick. Um, I, you? Oh, hi, I'm over here. Hey. Um, and I wanted to ask, um, who first taught you to clown, and how does it feel to do this like really niche art form on the biggest gay stage in the world? Well, I learned to clown. Thank you for your question. I love your mesh shirt. Beautiful brown eyes. Um, I... <laughs> I love clowning. Like I said, I'm a bit of a procrastinator. I like to fuck around. And um, clowning, what was sort of held me back from performance and comedy originally was the idea that you have to preconceive what's funny. You have to preconceive your jokes. You have to write it all down. You've got to practice it somewhere. And then you have to display it for people. And they're going to laugh when you want them to laugh. And once I realized clowning is all about fuck all of that stuff, and you show up and you're truthful and you're with your audience, 
and you have an experience with them, it's there is the magic and there's the fun. So once I understood that, it unlocked performance for me. And so clowning is my understanding of the relationship with the audience and the performer. And so it's kind of in everything I do. Even in public speaking, once you've been a clown, it helps you deal with all kinds of things. So, yeah. Well put, Jim. And, oh. we, and we love to watch you do it. We yes. love, love, love to watch you do it. Um, really quick shout outs to my cousins Christian, Belinda, and my mom over there. Hi, mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> we're, we're, we're twinning with the same uh, Bob today. Yeah. Um, but in, <laughs> we're twinning with our mama. Bobs. Okay. But in the meantime, right now, I would love if you guys make some noise for your top two of All Stars 8 Candy Muse. And Jimbo! Thank you! Do not forget, we are back next week with the finale of All Stars 8 with Candy Muse's season 13 sister, Denali, as well as Jimbo's UK versus the world sister, Mo Hart. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And I have some merch, like I said. I think it's over there somewhere. See my partner, Brady, if you're interested. Yes. Yeah, there's there's merch that you guys can get. That'll be up. Oh, no, it's done? All right, it's gone. It's okay, done. Okay, never mind. If you didn't get it, oh, well. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. it's, you can get it online, I'm sure. Uh, we're performing in about, let's say about 11 o'clock, we'll be performing, so stick around for performances. There's a storm outside. You shouldn't go anywhere. Just stay here, drink, and have <laughs> Look at that. And have a good time uh, with us. We'll see you next week. Please make some noise for Miss Caramel DeVille. <laughs> Please keep that energy going for our ASL interpreter, Jessica. Yes. And keep it going for Batty Davis. And please make some noise and vote for my sister for the Fame Games, Naysha Lopez. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys so, so much. We'll see you in a little bit right now. We're going to have you guys move to the... Oh.